Um, today I wanted to play a deck that's very near and dear to my heart, and that would be the <laughs> the classic Ulfric's Covenant. So Ulfric's Covenant is a deck that I played on the channel before I asked you guys on my community tab on YouTube, which, by the way, it, that's a great place to kind of interact with me a little bit better. That way you guys can kind of directly uh, contact me when I'm asking a more... Uh, specific question about what you guys would like to see because that's kind of where I go for that type of stuff so uh, in the future if you guys ever see a community tab just make sure to respond to that and kind of put your input in so on the community tab recently as in like within the last month I asked what kind of uh, decks on the channel were your guys favorite and there was one in the comments that uh, specifically mentioned a deck that I did a while ago called Ulfric's Covenant, which is a deck that I really, really like. It got quite a few likes on YouTube, and uh, so I decided to kind of give that one a little bit of a reprisal. But yeah, so um, today we're going to be doing a little bit of Ulfric's Covenant. Uh, this deck is a Daggerfall deck, which I've been known to clown on in the past, but I actually really like Daggerfall. I think that it's a very fun color combination. I just think when you're focusing entirely on items in the deck, it gets a little bit weaker. So the main point of this deck and why it's called Ulfric's Covenant is because we're doing Ulfric's Uprising. So Ulfric's Uprising is a seven cost action with the effect of trigger the summon of each friendly creature. So uh, if we're going through the list, we've got Shrieking Harpy, Wardcrafter, Bloodcrazed, Daedroth, Galen the Shelterer, Treeminder, Dishnik Yal, Elusive Schemer, Piercing Twilight, um, Dop Doppelganger doesn't really count, Hollow Death Priest, Shadow Fen Priest, Memory Wraith, uh, Abner, what's that, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have 17 creatures with summon effects in this deck. So Ulfric up, Ulfric's Uprising is going to work on a ton of creatures, and we've also got stuff like the uh, the Doppelganger and Abner Tharn to <clears throat> kind of re-trigger summon effects as well. And uh, also Knights to Remember over here. So we're going to try to get the most value that we can out of our summon effects. Uh, Dark Rebirth will also contribute to that as well. And uh, a lot of these creatures are pretty powerful. You'll notice we're only running two of a lot of creatures. So if we go over to Doppelganger, we're only running two of those. But we also have an Abner Tharn, which will kind of counteract that, make it sort of work as three. Doppelganger, as I'm sure many of you know, uh, has the summon effect of transform Doppelganger into a copy of another friendly creature. When Doppelganger is transformed into another creature, it will instantly get that summon effect. So if we were to throw a Piercing Twilight down and then Doppelganger, that Piercing Twilight, the Doppelganger would instantly get the summon effect of the Piercing Twilight as well. So it's like having a summon effect for a summon effect, <laughs> essentially, more or less. Um, and again, Abner Tharn uh, uses the summon ability of a creature, so these two have very similar effects, which is why we run three of them. Uh, Gatekeeper is kind of a little bit of fun. I'm just going to go through, because I've done this deck on the channel before. I'm, I'm going through a little bit quicker. Uh, the Grumite here, the summon effect is that your opponent discards the highest cost action in their hand. This will be really good for getting rid of stuff like a new era and for getting rid of, uh, what's the other one? Call Dragon. So those cards are going to be immediately kind of escorted out of our opponent's hand. Same thing with reanimate, you know, all that kind of annoying stuff. Uh, Grumite can handle, but we only need two of them because they're kind of high cost. If you look at our curve here, it's okay. It's fairly decent. We've got some cards to counteract that. Uh, Hist Grove and where else are they? Treeminder here will be used pretty effectively to boost our Magicka up. And then with stuff like Ulfric's Uprising, Knight to Remember, Doppelganger, Galen, and Abner, it's very, very likely that we're going to reach that 15 Magicka threshold. Um, same thing with Spine of Elder's Blood here. Very likely we're going to reach that 15 Magicka threshold to proc our Hist Groves early and to get to our high end a little bit quicker. I don't really think there's a whole lot else to go over in this list. Aldalothi, Barrow Stalker, those are just solid. They don't have uh, they don't have summon effects, but they are pretty good. And uh, Daggerfall Mage is also very good. Combos well with Wardcrafter. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop talking at this point. We're gonna get into some matches. Okay, up first we're going up against JD Cakes. They are on Mono Strength, and they are the Monster Hunter. 
So JD Cakes is probably going to be kind of a tough fight. We've got a 51 card deck we're going up against kind of early in the match here. I could see a cause for keeping the Mummify there, but I also really like having that on Prophecy, especially against a mono deck like this that's going to be pure intelligence. Okay, Daggerfall Mage coming out first. At least that's what it's looking like currently. We stand united. Yeah, okay. So mono, red. I don't know if this is going to be exclusively orcs, Five but I guess we'll find eight. out. Oh, that is so oh. annoying. <laughs> Okay, so we know he's got Unrelenting Force. I think we're still going to do Daggerfall Mage, especially now that we got a Ward Crafter. Definite loss of tempo on our part, but uh, we'll see. See if we can come back. Morthal Watchman. Wow. <laughs> okay. I think this might be one of the worst cards in Legends. Dr. Doubt, it is a Friday. Nice to be able to unwind with some Legends stream. Yeah, you and me both, man. Appreciate you being here. You were at the Dark Souls stream as well. Um, hope that you were able to catch the VOD that I did. I was pretty happy with the editing that I was able to do on that one, honestly. Um, yeah, so we got two Tomes of Alteration here. We procced a ward onto this thing, and now we've got our Dark Guardian here, which is a 2-5 guard that's going to be pretty helpful, I think. By axe, I'll okay. Blood so I think this is a pretty easy Tome of Alteration that we're going to equip here. Either that, or we do a Dark Rebirth on this. That doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. I think we're going to do Tome here, Your blood will and then we're going to preserve our guard, and just keep these two over here. This might pivot him over into the field lane if we're lucky. A lot of people don't like to play in the field lane, especially at these kind of lower ranks, so we'll see. The Shadow Lane can definitely feel a lot more comfortable for new players, or for people that are a little bit, uh, oh wow, <laughs> I was going to say a little bit less comfortable. Unstoppable Rage, not quite enough. Um, this will at least guard us. I'm not super happy about using the Gatekeeper here, but that's going to guard us, so we'll use it as a Protector of our face. And because he's mono strength, I don't really think he's got a good kind of answer to this. Uh, he could have fell the mighty, I guess, or stone throw at this point. Servant of Dagoth doesn't quite do it, though. Yeah, I caught parts of the Dark Souls stream. Haven't watched the VOD yet. My weeks stay super busy. Yeah, um, I remember that you were there for the Sif fight. And I included that when I was editing the video, so you will be in the video for sure. Um, I thought that video was a lot of fun. I know that most people that are watching the channel aren't really watching for the, the Dark Souls stuff. <laughs> um, but it's a fun little side hobby, and I know that some of you guys at least are interested in it, so... I am definitely happy to provide. I think tomorrow we're going to be doing the, uh, the Artorias of the Abyss DLC. King Sean Lee, hello. Hello! Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping by. Um, okay, so we're actually going to swing first instead of laying cards down. Uh, so, what does he have? He's got a lot of stuff going on here. I don't really want him to have more unrelenting force. TBH. So we're going to get rid of that. One two, and three. Cool. So that's something we no longer have to worry about, which is awesome. And if we get our 
Ulfric's uprising off. We would get to do that again. Poor Sif, but hey, I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely YouTube famous. You know, when I was a kid, I watched uh, Captain Sparkles a lot, the Minecraft YouTuber, and always enjoyed your Tesla content. Thank you. Really appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I watched a lot of uh, Captain Sparkles when I was younger, and I actually was in one of his videos. I was, like, stalking him while he was playing Minecraft Hunger Games, and I made my way into one of his vids. Um, my username down here, Malumps, is the username that I've had since I was a kid, and it was named after <laughs> Lumpy Space Princess from uh, Adventure Time, and I just thought that was such a funny kind of name that I've had it for a while. I've stopped using it, but uh, a lot of my old usernames, if you want to add me on Xbox 360, just look for Malumps. Um, but yeah, so you can find me in that video. It's a friend over here. Oh no! Oh, I didn't see dude over here. Oh god. Oh god. And Dunzoed. I think that dude started off by hitting me and then he changed his mind and he tried <laughs> giving me his weapon. So, uh, oh well, you know, these things, they do happen. Child of Hercene. And Inspiring Stormcloak. Man. I guess Inspiring Stormcloak isn't so bad. I thought it was that one that is just abysmal. Uh, okay. So, we've got 8 plus 6 is 14. If we could generate just one more tome, then we could actually do something here. But unfortunately, we can't. Uh... Hmm. Let's swing first. So we're going to swing with the six and break two runes. And of course, there's a prophecy. More cool gatekeeper. I was wondering where that guy went. Okay. So we know now that he's got plans for this child of Hercene. So what we can do to set up for... Oh, well, never mind. Um, yeah, we can just play Emmerich's, or Emmerich Covenant King. Um, I had a kind of convoluted idea where I was going to do Swing and then Unstoppable Rage, but Emmerich's fine. He's, he's there for the removal. And then we have Unstoppable Rage on whatever he plays over here to contest us. But we'll see what JD Cakes does. Heavy Battle Axe. Heavy Battle Axe plus something else. Captain Sparkles makes me think of Minecraft song parodies. Oh, dude, you know I've got all those locked inside my brain. <laughs> I used to listen to those all the time. Probably won't be doing a rendition tonight, though. Lumbering Ogrim is a 7 4. Yeah, so we win. GG. Well Yet another dub for the Ulfrix Covenant. Silly video, and uh, it actually makes some content for you guys. Um, this is Any Hell, I think is how I'd pronounce that. And they're on a 50 card spell sword deck. All of this stuff is kind of awful to have. I would say prove it but I don't want them stuck in my head all night. <laughs> yeah, um, man, I'm trying to think of what my favorite one was. There were so many good ones. I think my favorite Captain Sparkles thing of all time was the, uh, the Dianite and Mayanite streams that he used to do with, uh, with the Syndicate. And, oh man, what was that other guy's name? can't remember. We're going to get our Histgrove down, bump our Magicka up by one, and then have this looming threat of the Swamp Leviathans showing up. And it looks like our friend here is on Dragon Spellsword, which is something that I'm not too happy to be facing against, obviously. Um, we're going to lay Galen down early, and I'm going to put more Hollow Death Priests in, because dragons tend to be high cost, so if I can... If I can hit one of his dragons, that'd be sick. Get 
back, I say. The the cold play cover. Probably my favorite. Repel Take the back the night. <laughs> favorite Captain Sparkle song. Ooh, we got his pure blood elder. That's awesome. Okay, and then I think just to preserve our life, we're gonna put the ward crafter down and ward up our Galen. And this would be a disgusting, disgusting Ulfric right here. We can still kill the Karth Spire, thankfully. Get back, I say. All right. Oh, never mind. No, we can't. Boom. 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 I'm going to put Shadowfen over here and silence this because it generates a lot of value that I don't really want. I don't really want my opponent to continue having guards over and over and over. And he is going to waste a javelin on me, which is fine because that opens up a uh, a perfect target for hey for this guy, <laughs> the piercing twilight. So now we can get rid of his uh, his piercing javelins with my piercing twilight, and we got rid of two of them, which means he's probably got one in his hand still. I've never known of a person to put ooh edict of Azura. That's too bad. Yeah, I've never known of a person to only put two of those in their deck rather than three, unless they're running the cast into time. We're just going to play our turn like that. I think that's perfectly fine. This thing establishes a lot of dominance. Well, he's got this. Kind of been a quick match thus far. Very comfortable playing a Dishnik Yaw here. We want to get that out of his hand, or out of his board, as quick as we can. And now with that, we're even on Magicka, and he's got a guard that is better than mine. Hollow Death Priest, though, is pretty cool to see. Uh, I think I like this a little bit more. So, I'm going to pull out my... Ulfric's, uh, hmm. I'm going to pull out my Uprising. Why not? Because this will make it so that way I can do a, a pretty crazy Uprising if all of this stuff stays on the board. Because I can put down Death Priest. Okay, he's going to use his other Piercing Javelin, which is fine, again, because I've got Blood Magic right there. So, we do Hollow Death Priest. This is going to feel really, really bad for him. <laughs> so there goes Lydia and Ulfric's Uprising we get rid of his Lucian I wouldn't be surprised if they conceded at this point we're going to shackle this shoot this boom and we're going to continue getting his shriveled mummies down um, he can't have anything too crazy. He could have a Dawn's Wrath, I suppose, but nothing nothing all that bad. Break two of his runes. His hand is getting filled back up. I think we'll play we the Emmerich's the Warlord here. Or, uh, not Emmerich's Warlord, Emmerich himself. They're in my sights. The Emmerich Coven King. Okay, goodbye to that. Currently we have 16 damage on board. And we've got Mummify and Fell the Mighty for that. Okay, now we've only got 9 on board. Feels a little bit wrong to use a Fell the Mighty on this, but I'm going to do it anyway. 6, 3. We hit a Prophecy, but it can't be a Piercing Javelin because we took the other two out of his deck already. Someone out there? It is a midnight snack, though, and we haven't gotten any of his dragons yet. Unless he's just maniacal and is running midnight snack without dragons. Um, but we know he's got some, because he's got the Karth Spires, right? But what I mean by that is that we haven't gotten his 
his uh, big priority dragons yet. I'm going to play the Blood Magic. He's got one more Edict. And it's going to go on this, if anything. Okay, Dawn's Wrath. So, kind of expecting that. But we should be able to win now. Yep. <laughs> cool. So, do that. And that's two wins down pretty easily. So, good game. Didn't run into any Parthernax or Odaving, although I'm sure that we were getting there in his hand. But we were able to beat him. All right, moving on along, we've got Nessie and Faye, the Immortal. They're on Monk, and they're going to try to take on the Ulfric's Covenant. Um, this hand right off the gate is not great. This is much better. I mean, the Red Year, not the best thing to see on turn three, or on, on turn one as our third card, but uh, not the worst. When did you start playing Elder Scrolls? Okay, so... My first Elder Scrolls game was Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and I have a very vivid memory of it. So, when I was a kid, I was in fifth grade, and this kid had just transferred into the district that I went to school in. Uh, his name was Nathan. Unfortunately, can't stay for the stream. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Thanks for stopping by. Um, so, this kid, Nathan, he, he uh, invited me over to his house. And he's like, dude, I've got to show you this game. And I'm like, okay. And uh, he's like, do you play video games? I'm like, yeah, kind of. You know, I played like Pokemon and stuff up to that point, but not really like video games. I, I had a Nintendo DS Lite. That was about the extent of my video games. And uh, so he shows me Elder Scrolls Oblivion. And he's just at the point in that game where he's in the Oblivion gate physically. And uh, it was so cool to me. I'd never seen anything like that in my whole life. And uh, at that point, I was just like, dude, I've got to get an Xbox. <laughs> like, this is, what am I missing? And so uh, I didn't remember what the name of that game was because that friend of mine, he had moved to a new state. And, uh, and I didn't get his number because it was like 2010. Um, but it was super cool, nonetheless. And, uh, and that was my first experience playing an Elder Scrolls game or seeing an Elder Scrolls game played. But uh, it was a very cool one, again. Okay, we get Lanith there. We're going to kill her. There's an argument to be made that I should have played the Schemer in this lane, but... Eh. Okay, so he is pure aggro. Which could work for him, honestly. Uh, Dushnik Yal, though, is going to rain on his parade. And if we're lucky, we'll redraw that as a zero. Yeah, what about you guys, though? Uh, what was your first Elder Scrolls game? Or first Elder Scrolls experience? Sounds like a good memory, though. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I tried to find that guy on Facebook when I was younger, but I never could. Um, giant Bat or Spoils of War? Uh, why not? Why not both? Why not both? Two and... Okay, so he's probably got another one. Wilds Incarnate. Yeah, that's good. That is good. We're going to have to do like Elusive Schemer. Be rid of me that easily. Shrieking Harpy? Maybe? I don't know. It doesn't seem too right, but that's what I've got. An Elder Gleam 
matron. We are one turn away from the red year, but I don't think we're going to be able to make it. Although double mummify is pretty good. So we could do like that. Boom. Boom. <laughs> we're going to have to be very lucky here. I hope he plays down his entire hand. Okay, not quite what I wanted, but still, that'll work. The red ear is the only answer that we had there, for better or worse. <laughs> Prized chicken. Hell yeah, dude. Um, Barrow Stalker and... Hmm. Yeah. Probably her, right? Ooh, I shouldn't have played in the field lane, though. That was a little ridiculous. Uh, hmm. So then what do we do next? Because field lane allows him to kill this, so... Huh. Although, wait, he can't attack with this, so it doesn't matter unless he gets... Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to grab an Uprising. So, what's something that he could get here, though? He could get a... No, I swear there's a card that buffs animals. Also, I am going to let Edmore know that we are live on Twitch. Okay, so he did buff up. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, do the harpy here. Back off. Okay, we'll do the zero cost. And probably Shadow Fen. Yeah, Shadow Fen sounds right. So we'll do a priest. That. 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 Then Ulfric's Uprising. I gotta admit, I only played Tessel as the only Elder Scrolls game. Started playing it in 2017, I think, and forgot about it until like 2022. Since then, I've just been playing it a few times uh, a week. Just love the gameplay. Yeah, it's really fun. Honestly, it's a very good game. Um, even detached from the rest of the series. I'm going to pull out a Blood Magic Lord, because that'll generate some immediate value. I will silence this then shackle it and that's going to be our turn uh yeah i've noticed that a lot of people in the Ooh. what is that too <laughs> oh damn dude it's crazy um yeah a lot of people in the community though um typically are more fans of legends than they are fans of elder scrolls which is totally fine gotcha We'll do... Hmm. This is getting really tricky, Wrong so we need to get that health gain. <laughs> and we need and to another. shuffle more in. in the next now, the hardest part's going to be this. So, Blood Crazed goes down. Boom here. And this is what I'm stuck on. So... We could do a Dark Rebirth on this. I think that would be good. I think I will do a Dark Rebirth there. This thing is still shackled. So we'll be able to get that on it. Yep, and we don't want to break any runes. Tomato, potato, womp, womp. <laughs> It's the perfect noise for you to enter. 
my friend. Um, we're gonna go kill that, do that, and specifically what I need here is a Dishnikyal Archer. So we need that Orc Lady immediately. And we'll just lay her down here. And this is really the benefit of knowing what is inside of your deck. Uh, Hollow Death Priest here. Ooh, we got rid of his Shadow Green Elder. Okay, so we're going to wait. Going to hold on. I've got another Dark Rebirth and Abner Tharn and a Knight to remember. Ooh. Okay, he got rid of my Drain, but that's fine. So, was that his first... That was his first javelin. We'll get rid of those. One, two. Oh, that sucks. Uh, yeah, we'll do another night to remember. And then we'll gain a Barrow Stalker. Put it over here. And then I'll wait. He probably has another piercing, yeah, <laughs> another piercing javelin. Um, and the Great Wood Elder. Interesting. Well, what do we want to do about this? I'm going to do this. What else does he have? Great Wood Elder doesn't really matter to get rid of. We got rid of all of his Shadow Greens. Feasting Vulture. Slinking Jackal, I, I wouldn't mind getting rid of. I am a child. Uh, but I think we're going to do this. And unless he has Cliff Racer, he can't actually kill me. So we'll do Abner Tharn. Okay, he's <laughs> he's just going to quit. Perfect. So what I was going to do is do Abner onto Lanneth, and then I was going to get a uh, Unstoppable Rage, and then I was going to gain a bunch of health with the Night Shadow, but he realized at that point that he was dead. So, pretty cool match. Do you have a deck you like playing most amongst all the different decks? This is one of my favorites. We're up against uh, Epidemia on Guild Sworn, the Miraculous at rank 8, and they are on 75 cards. Cool. Uh, yeah, this one's one of my favorite. Uh, I really enjoy my uh, one of my House Dagoth lists. A, a lot of the decks that I posted at the beginning of this channel, uh, they might not be the most fun videos to watch, to be honest with you, but they are some of my most favorite decks. Um, <laughs> Just because those were the ones, like, I posted them early because those were the ones that I felt the most comfortable showcasing, you know? But I wasn't that comfortable recording at that point. But, like, this deck, um, the uh, Stealer of Secrets Dagoth is a really fun one for me. Uh, my Journey to Sovngarde Guild Sworn is always one of my favorite ones as well. Uh, just a lot of silly stuff like that that I like to play. I think this one is probably the strongest of the of the main decks that I play. Just because it has so much removal in it. It's kind of annoying to play against, honestly. But it's a little bit of a um, brainchild of mine. Yeah, what about you guys, though? Any um, Any particular decks or archetypes that you guys like to play? Also, I think we're going to get the Grumite down, because he's got seven cards in hand, and we got rid of his Red Year. Holy crap. <laughs> That's awesome. I hate when that happens to me. Okay, Fell the Mighty. So he's going to gain some health. Um, We have a pretty bad opening hand. Can't lie. Pretty awful. I'm going to use a Dishnikyal Archer on this thing, because I don't like it being around. And it's the only creature we have other than Doppelganger, so it at least opens up some avenues for us to play in the future. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. 
do we do a shadow pen priest so far we found out he's playing fell the mighty piercing javelin ice storm and the red year <laughs> love playing telvani and singleton singleton is really fun as well um my f well not my favorite video but the video that people seem to watch the most on my channel so many shenanigans possible yeah absolutely um the video that people seem to watch the most on my channel is the uh the alone and angry video which is the uh singleton uh singleton warrior video that i did from a while ago and i really like that deck i really like that video and i think that it's just a ton of fun to play Okay, so what's he going to get rid of of mine? Probably Fell the Mighty. Okay, Shadowfen. I can understand that. We only run two Shadowfen Priests in our deck. So we run two Shadowfen and two Dishnik Yal, so four ways to remove supports in total. But since I already used a Dishnik this early in the match, uh, we actually only have one source of support removal left, so that's great. We'll play our Mummify. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we'll do Dark Guardian, kill the mummy that we just made, and then I'll play this down, even though it's it's going to get javelined or felled or something. He's playing a 5 cost, Chanter of Akatosh. <laughs> well, that sucks. At least he got no value from that, though. Caius Mechanations, you sacrifice the sweet roll. Nice. And now we know he's not on Singleton, which I was thinking that he might have been. Well, we can kill that. I don't really feel too good about... Uh, I should clear this notification. Um, I don't really feel too good about the red year here. I kind of like Doppelganger on this, honestly. Although Devaith could be... Well, no. We'll do Doppelganger. Because Devaith can come out after he's used more removal. And I'm guessing this is a, a Dawn's Wrath enjoyer, so we should probably... <laughs> of course he's got Call Dragon. Um, we should probably play in the same lane that he's in. Fire Breath. Damn, this is going to be a pretty good red year. If I could get a uh, Unstoppable Rage, that would be 5, 10, 15, 19 damage straight to his face. Never mind. Okay. Ooh. Wow. That's high value. So, um, Piercing Twilight. We get rid of his Call Dragons. One two, three. We got rid of all of them. That's big. Then we'll play a Dark Rebirth. Get rid of his Piercing Javelins. One, two, three. <laughs> Hell yeah. And we can get rid of his Fell the Mighty as well. This way we have nothing left to worry about. One, two, three. This is huge. Okay. I'm going to pop that because I don't really want that anymore. Um, and then we'll kill his chanter. And we do have the red ear. So that's good. He probably swings like boom. Ooh, Rothgar Forge. Okay. Well, now he can't kill this still. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Boom, boom. 
Interesting. Your pain is well, we've gotten rid of a lot of his removal. So... I think we'll play Devaith over here. We'll see what it pops. Oh, of course it hits that. Just a Fate Weaver, though. And he overdraws his Skeever infestation. Are you listening to me? And Therana. Wow. Therana treasure map. That's pretty good. Mighty Conjuring. So, we're going to want a Ward Crafter here. Or Ulf... Oh, <laughs> okay, cool. Ulfric's Uprising is fine. Um, instead of hitting face first, we're going to do Uprising first. One. Two. Wow, that sucked. Okay. Hit there. And uh, I'm going to do a Preserver of the Root. He gets... Or he overdraws, not gets rid of, one of his casts into time. Unsummon an enemy creature. Damn. Well, now he's got way more of those in his deck. Dragon aspect, of course. So he'll go down to 11 health. He's got more of those now. And Excavate to get his College of Winterhold back. This is superb. <laughs> this is great news. Love that. Okay, so... Uh, Shrieking Harpy. Could be decent. Uh, I don't quite want to do the Red Year, honestly. I'll do... Harpy over here, Shackle Therana. But doing the Red Year on 14 damage when I've got 24 health just doesn't really seem worthwhile. Well, of course he's got that. Probably what, College now? Yeah, College, then get his one cost. And then shuffle more garbage into his deck. <laughs> Mute. Okay, Mute is not garbage. But he's got three of them in his deck now. So he's at 55 cards. After having played a ton. That. And I will pass the turn back to him. Ten hours later. Oh, and there's one of the dragon aspects. My enemies have wow, okay. He's got the Stealer of Secrets. Do I have any mummifies left? I do, I've got two. <laughs> He's got Gentleman Jim. Most gracious of you. Yep, nice play. You fight well. Okay, well, that's uh, that's great. If he doesn't kill me here, then I, uh, I'm just gonna leave. Although I do think that he should play Ulfric's Covenant because I want to see this thing as a 54-54, or higher actually. Now that he's played that. Um, can I add this person as a friend? I said good day. Epidemia. We'll see if we can get them uh, as a friend. Because I, I really want them to play this. Uh, we'll do Spine and Ward Crafter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I said good day. Okay. Schemer and Ancano. I could just end myself with Ancano. <laughs> Get this match over with in style. 
good is like juggling. Things are He's even gotten to that. That's crazy. Um, Ancano, a knight to remember, doesn't quite work. We would need two or three to kill this. But he, no, I think now he's going to play it. Okay. <laughs> there we go. What's this thing going to become? 53-53. Nice. And it's finally over. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Usually I leave those kind of matches, but I wanted to see a big creature go, go burr. Okay. We're up against Griffin48, the war hero. They're on Empire, and hopefully they're playing something a little bit different to what our Guild Sworn friend was playing before, because I don't think I could mentally handle that at this point. Um, I'm going to keep this opening hand. It's a little bit lopsided, but I I like the fact that we might be gaining some Magicka pretty early on. There's Uprising. Abner and Uprising, right off the bat. The waters of life. He's got an early tree minder, which is a pretty good card, so I'm gonna counter that with my own tree minder. Personally speaking, I think that the Thieves Guild Shadowfoot is totally obnoxious. We're up to seven Magicka now on our next turn. And then we can do a Spine and get up to nine on our next one. So why not? All of our cards have been ramp cards so far. We can actually get up to Emmerich if he's got something kind of crazy. Yeah, that's not crazy, it's just annoying. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, oh man, do a hollow death priest, nine was his highest, hmm, I can actually get this shackled, and I can do another knight to remember, which could be kind of crazy, uh, I don't think we need to do that though. We've got Ulfric's Uprising coming up, which is going to get a pretty decent value. Some thieves have okay, manners. well, <laughs> uh, we give him a night to remember then. I guess it's good that we did that because, well, not really. I, whatever way you work around it, it didn't need to happen. Um, yeah. And he's going to play a Knight to Remember on this, so we, we actually need to get rid of that. So not as good of a turn as I wanted it to be. But that's okay. Mummify. Good target for me to use Piercing Twilight on in the future. So far, the match is going kind of back and forward, back and forth. It's uh, not really gone anywhere. This one is very... Quinn this Raw is... Burglar. I had a feeling he was playing that. Wrong place for that, and like that. The water. I think we'll just double block this lane. That way he can't get a pilfer off without expending some resources. And he's got Sky Shard. Wow. That's actually a cool combo. I've never thought about that. Um, what is this? Power plus health. So we would gain 10 health if we did Abner. We don't need to do that, though. Oh, 
Here's our Swamp Leviathans. So I think we just go aggro now. And I like Grumite here. Although, I'll wait. No, I won't. Cast into time. Okay. That's good. He could still have Piercing Javelins or another cast into time. Or Edict of Azura. Could have a lot of stuff. But we've got 16 plus 6 is 24. Plus 3 is 27. So, never mind. All that extra math didn't matter. <laughs> Is that right? 16 plus 6? No, that's 22. My bad. Um, Ulfric's Uprising literally doesn't do anything. We'll break a few of his runes. And I will play Gorbog. Why not? Well, I could think of a reason why not. It's probably because he's going to javelin it. <laughs> but Oh, Aeliot Guardian. Wow, that's too bad. Yep, that's too bad that you would stoop to such a level. Shrieking Harp. Okay, so that's 13 Magicka plus this. So what I can do is Abner Tharn. Um, I can Abner Tharn this. <laughs> and then I can kill this. And then I can play an Uprising. And if he wants to be a dick, I can be a dick, too. Uh, do that. There we go. Um, I'll shackle this. Unfortunately, Gortwog is not going to go off, but... Uh, Thorn Hist Mage. And shackle one of these guys. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Groovy. Gortwog did get to go off then. So we'll do that. Um, and now, actually, that he did that, I can kill this. I can kill this. And I can deal some damage to him. Okay. Himkano is pretty good. <laughs> um, is that enough to kill him? It's not. But we can get pretty close. So we just need one Dishnikyal Archer and we're good to go. This thing can't kill any of the Aeliot Guardians that are in this lane. Immolating Blast would... yeah. <laughs> yep, I mean, you know, I can, I can utilize Aeliot Guardians. <laughs> So there we go. Okay, we're up against um, Leicester325, the Abominator. They're on a 51 card deck, 51 card scout deck. Um, they are the Steed at rank 7. And we've got a decent opening hand. It's not as rampy as our last one, but we do have a ramp card, which is nice. And we've got the red year for some early insurance. So we'll see if we can be stopped or if we can't. Um, Barrow Stalker plus Ward Crafter is a super awesome combo. I think I'm going to wait on it, though. I'm going to wait to see what he plays, and then I'm going to be a reactive player rather than a proactive one. Goblin Skulk. So, probably good that we waited. Because we can put this over here and we can block that now. Now, it's totally possible that he's got a Murkwater Shaman or something to get this down to, to one health. Or he's got Galen. Galen's also viable. He doesn't want to do a damn thing. So now we play... We could play Wardcrafter. I think we will play Wardcrafter, and I think I misplayed that. I totally did. <laughs> but that's alright. I can come back from it. 
What I meant to do was hit first and then do a, a ward crafter on there, but that's fine. That sets up nicely, actually, for a Dishnikyal archer coming up soon. He's got a five cost. So. <laughs> he really wants that skulk to go off. Okay. What's he used so far? He's used close call. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting some close calls into my deck, but... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I do Dishnik Yall over here. That's eight damage. No, seven damage, but it's all going to be eaten up by this guy. Or I just cycle my cards with Schemer. Or I get rid of his close call. I think I get rid of his close call. I kill this. He only had one close call. <laughs> okay. Not the best move. Not the best turn of moves that I've ever had. Move in shadows, wow. Does it move back at the end of its turn? I can't remember. Yeah, it does. Damn. Okay, so this person's got the edge on me, clearly. Um, we'll just have to spend some time establishing. I think I'm actually going to get this down because it gets us closer to the red year. I'm feeling like we might need a board reset soon. Um, he probably... Hits in with this one, right? That way he gains four magic of this turn. So I think the board reset was correct. Okay, no, so lethal. Then this? Yeah, okay. Oh, cards! That's not Magicka. That's not the Magicka one. That's the card one. My bad. We do want to play Dishnik, get rid of his Brotherhood Sanctuary. We don't want to play it over here, though. <laughs> we just simply don't want to do that. So we'll pop that. And ordinarily, it might be better to draw a card first and then choose your next move. But I absolutely wanted to get rid of his Sanctuary here. He's probably got a Curse or Suppress. Okay, he's got a Suppress for me. So he might be doing some kind of market thing. Dark Brotherhood. Um, yeah. Don't really mind this. To, to just get rid of this. <laughs> and we'll do that. Because we've got the Red Deer coming up on the next turn. So. He'll have to kill this. He'll gain some magic. Or not Magicka. Sorry. He'll gain a card. <laughs> And uh, that's just going to have to be okay. He's got a lot of cards, though. Night Town Lord. Good old NTL. Okay. I think we'll do this. We're going to have to play for the long game here. He's gotten rid of two Pomerat Renegades. Or Pomerat Renegades. Two of those, two of those. If I play the Red Year, what's his move on the next turn, you know? Does he just pull out another Night Talon Lord? Maybe. But that's a risk I'm willing to take. We've got Devaith coming up.
The main thing I was worried about with Night Talon Lord is that, yeah, he's got a better one. <laughs> What's that buffed up from? Is it not going to tell me? It's got rallied. Okay. So yeah, he's got a better one. Uh, the main thing I was about to say that I'm worried about with Night Talon Lord is that he may have a Squish the Wimpy, which is something that I can't really deal with. So we'll do a Grumite. Okay, no, Move in Shadow is his his highest uh, his highest cost action. So now it's uh, it's kind of a matter of Lanneth and the Fell the Mighty. Territorial bite around this. Makes my next uprising a little bit less worth it, but still good nonetheless. And Cicero. Kikero, as he would be known in ancient Latin. I'm surprised he's not running Squish, though. That's very surprising to me. Uh, where is Fel the Mighty? Right there. Goodbye, sir. And I will kill this. He does have 30 cards left, though. It's possible he hasn't found his Squish the Wimpy yet. I do not fear death. Okay. This one is very resourceful. I slay the Man, lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff. We'll do... Sha oh, I didn't mean to put it there. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Shadowfin on that. And then Ulfric's Uprising. We'll grab a Knight to Remember. We'll silence this. Pump this guy over. Silence this. And then I'll kill this. Not exactly how I wanted that turn to go, but it worked out. He's got six damage, so we do need to do something quickly. I've used two knights to remember. And there's an iron atronach. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, so that's that's a big, big stinky L. Um, we're gonna have to get real creative here with how we go about winning this. Tome of Alteration will be necessary. Red Brahmin. <laughs> All right, GG. That was a fine deck to lose to. I'm really shocked he didn't have uh, Squish, though. That would have fit so well in his deck. He must have just gotten unlucky in finding it. Okay, we're up against Devil J Ho 99 um, This person is on a 99-card deck, and they have the Dovahkiin tag. So this is probably a Dragon Enthusiast. <laughs> this is kind of a goaded opening hand, though. Uh, yeah, I I'm seeing dragons in my future. <laughs> okay, we wait to play a Daggerfall Mage to counter whatever thing he puts down. Hey, look at that. Ancient Lookout. Ancient Lookout is a very good card. Nice. Devour. Absolutely love that. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll keep on going on. But now we've got to face a Karth Spire that has Ward, I'd imagine. Blood Dragon. Okay. Blood Dragon, no Ward is good, but now we have to deal with this. Yeah, just a lot of great stuff. <laughs> a lot, a lot of great stuff. Um, this is why 
I always say the dragons are, are strong is because they have cards that buff them. So... Hollow Death Priest gets rid of my Hollow Death Priest. Thankfully, we can get rid of this. <laughs> um, I do think that Daggerfall Mage is good. And Blood Crazed is good. So we can slow him down a bit. Unfortunately, the Mummify does get pulled before we can draw it on Prophecy. I'm going to let this person know that we are also... Uh, we are live on Twitch. That is Tiny Dragon. Jesus Christ. Can't get away from it. Uh, okay. Play here. Uh, do I want to waste my ward on that? Yeah, no. Nope. Uh, we want to ward this back up. Swing at his face. He is going to make me overdraw in a minute here. Ward crafter. Not too bad, though. We're going to lose out on our Tome of Alteration, but... Oh, and there's Call Dragon right on curve. Wow. <laughs> it's stunning. Oh, God. Oh, and there's the red year. That is... That's great. <laughs> um, I think we play Piercing Twilight to get rid of his Call Dragons. One, two, three. Perfect. Play Dushnik to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to keep the ward on the Daggerfall Mage because I can't afford any more cards in my hand. And the Wildfire Dragon is going to change that immediately. <laughs> oh boy. With Ward. That's the one that got my Ward. I mean, I think you you probably do this, this. Because you want to keep this alive. Although he didn't really have to do anything there. I don't have anything in my hand that would have stopped him. But he doesn't know that, so. Okay. Mummify is fine here. Um... Crafter that. I mean, I can't keep up with his threats. He's got 90 cards <laughs> still for me to deal with. So, we'll just have to take the punches as they come. But I can try. Okay, Gortwog. And yeah, he's just going to keep bringing stuff back, because Soltair is so cool. <laughs> Um, I will kill that, and then I'm going to play Barrow. I'm going to play Barrow, Barrow, Crafter. And then I'm not going to do anything. Now I'm going to play Mummy. He got the Blades Lookout. That sucks. <laughs> That's, that is unfortunate. I don't think we've lost. I just think we're losing. You know? But it doesn't seem like he's got... He's got removal in his hand. Which is the one benefit of him playing all this ridiculous stuff. He's going to edict that? Oh, I, okay. I thought he edicted this. Okay. 
So maybe I should have put the ward on here, but the reason that I put the ward on the Barrow Stalker was so that way he would target one of those with removal. Uh, I wanted to make sure that one of them was left alive. Okay, but he doesn't actually get rid of this, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, we'll do, I guess, Uprising, right? That way we can get another... Well, let's do this first. Yeah, not really worth it, right? So we can do this, this, this. Grumite will surely get rid of something. Javelin, nice. Blood Magic Lord. <laughs> oh god. I can't believe that we overdrew the Red Ear. That really sucked. We at least have a decent target for Mummify. But he's going to get rid of that, isn't he? Oh, Shackle. Okay. Because he thinks that he's close to winning. We're going to do Mummify on this. Um, Tome. And then I would love to do Abner on this, but I can't. So... I'll do a Preserver of the Root. Then we'll start kind of leveling the playing field a bit, but not really. Doomcrag? <laughs> of course you run Doomcrag in this list, why not? Hey, Mummify is good though. Um, we'll Mummify this so he can't get another dragon back. We can just kill that easily. And also, he still believes that this thing is lethal, so he probably won't do anything about it. Well, he did something. Okay, Dark Rebirth doesn't do anything. Long All this stuff sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we're going to have to take six damage because I'm not about to do a Knight to Remember on this. Uh, and these don't have summon abilities, so... Yep, that sucks. Oh. Alright. Well. Dramora Marquinaz brings it in for the win. <laughs> Chat in a little bit. Not that you need to, you know, but just wondering. We're up against the Ravian. They're on Dagoth. They're the Master Wizard. And they're at 83 cards in their Dagoth deck. I'm going to throw back both of those and retain the Daggerfall Mage. And I do like this opening hand a bit more than what we had before. Because we actually curved out. We've got two, three, four. So if we can get a five, that'd be nice. I did feel kind of bad throwing back the Memory Wraith, but that's just because we haven't seen it all night. Imbued Bosmer. So this is actually my recommendation for anyone who's playing in uh, a scout deck and you want to use a 1-1 one, one for 1 lethal. I recommend using Imbued Bosmer over the Deathless Draugr, unless you're doing something very specific with undead cards, because this has that extra benefit of when it's consumed, you give the consuming creature... 1-1 one, one and lethal. So you can run a, a few more consume cards, like the Illicit Butcher is a good example. Uh, that combos well with this, but not with the Deathless Draugr. And uh, we'll see what this person has to say about this. I'm also realizing now I could have played this in the field lane, and then I could have just waited to do additional y'all and shoot this for one, but I'd prefer to use this on supports. And again, thank you to everybody who's shown up to the stream tonight. It really means a lot. I think we peaked at 12 viewers just a little bit ago, so that was awesome. 
Reachman Shaman. Okay. You meet your end. Reachman Shaman's not too bad. So we'll play a Dagger Fall against that. We get that out of our hands so we can buff something else up because we don't really care about this getting buffed when we're going to try to play it against a uh, against a 2-2 anyway. Uh, Tome, I think is the right move here. Tome opens up a few routes for us, so if he hits us now, we'll have a wounded creature rather than a dead one, <laughs> which is always nice. And then we can play a blood crazed Daedra. Um, that was an interesting move. It's not like I don't understand why he did it, though. Okay, so we'll do this. Um, I feel like Dark Guardian... Dark Guardian Field Lane feels okay. I don't really want to completely lock it down, like with a Daggerfall Mage, where he doesn't even want to play in the Field Lane anymore, because the Field Lane is where I feel most comfortable. So completely locking it down sometimes can be a little bit annoying, because our opponents will shift over onto this side, which can be a bit obnoxious. And our opponent is down to 79 cards in their deck. We'll stand together. Okay, the Sadras Agent. Not too bad. So we'll play the Daggerfall against that. Still don't have any wounded creatures to play the Blood Crazed on. Although I suppose we could make our own with the Dushnik Yal, but again, don't really want to do that. Be a waste of my time to wound one of my own creatures. What? <laughs> That's like a delayed reaction. Why is he running that? Why why is any of this happening right now? What what is going on? Is this Singleton? Excuse me? Bonky Nas Mage, really. Well, okay. Uh, Dishnik Yal Archer over here. Get rid of that. And I guess I'll play a Tree Minder in this lane. And break his ward. That's pretty bizarre. <laughs> I really love the art, by the way, on the Mournhold Guardian. I think she looks super cool. Like, the hair, the way that it's flowing, looks really nice. All the art in this game is cool. Daggerfall Mage has cool art. Even the Tree Minder. This dude looks like a homie. Oh, hell no! Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. What are we doing? We're playing A Night to Remember on Mournhold Guardian now. Okay, um, I'll play a Spine of Elder's Blood, and I guess I'll kill his portal just to draw a card. I didn't know that was something that we were doing now. I didn't know that that was part of the new meta, was to knight to remember your Mournhold Guardian. <laughs> Call Dragon, of course. The smorgasbord continues. Man, I love playing against some of you guys out there. It is incredible. I would never think to do some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll play Harpy over here. And now that that's all nice and shackled, we'll swing. Um, I'll play a Tome on this. 
and there's a spine of elder's blood so i'm glad we cycled that because that's not a very good card to draw on uh just as our next card you know uh if he happens to have a moose which he might in this menagerie of cards that he's cultivated um now he can't proc it anymore which is nice <laughs> I just expect the unexpected is the catchphrase of tonight. My friend would like a okay, Brett now. Conjurer. And Battle Mage is Onslaught. I'm feeling like this is Singleton. It's gotta be. Watch yourself now. Wardcrafter prematurely. If the Ravian, if you are a viewer of this channel at all, and if you're new to the game, I'm I am not trying to make fun of you for your deck. I just think that History some of the choices you've made... Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's conceded. I just think some of the choices in your deck are very interesting. Okay, we're up against Pulse Width 84, the Prophet. They are on a 78 card uh, Rhetoric deck. I think we'll keep the Barrow Stalker and the Ald Velathi because those are great two drops. And we've got a Wardcrafter as well. Uh, I will let City Toker know that we are we're on Twitch if you want to come on over. And I already let Doom Lord know. He does not seem like he wants to show up, which is okay. That's fine. Um, we're going to play down an Ald Velathi first. I know I was just talking about how sometimes I don't want to fully dominate the field lane, but I think that I can't really resist an Ald Velothi turn two. Because you can't really tell how the match is going to go. Easier in game, Twitch lags when I'm not on Wi-Fi. Totally fine. I'll let nothing get by. To let you no, Rustmark. Hey, glad I could make it to the stream. What deck are we playing tonight? We are playing with the uh, Ulfrix Covenant, which is a deck that I featured very, very early uh, on my YouTube channel. In fact, it's been about uh, it's been about one year since I've been uploading videos on Legends, and Ulfrix Covenant was like the oh god, it was within the top five or within the first five, I should say, decks that I started recording. So, uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks for watching, and. I hope that you can get something out of this. There's no way that we, <laughs> there's no way that we rallied on both doppelgangers, right? Back to back. That's just a little upsetting. Um, I think now is a perfectly good time to use our first mummify, because this yeah. is a problem. Thanks for giving me something to watch. It's suppose. What did that say? supposed to storm tonight so probably we'll be sitting in the truck all night yeah i've been there for sure uh he equipped that with a rhetoran battle spear man um i'm gonna lay the doppelganger down before <laughs> i do anything and this is what i was meaning uh about the uh locking down the field lane actually so this is a this is a good demonstration um when you lock down the field lane completely your opponent will pivot into the shadow lane and if you don't have a follow-up to that it becomes very very difficult to interact with them because they're just hiding over here and doing whatever they want and so that's kind of the pitfall that uh that we've gotten into okay if this if this rallies onto the doppelganger i'm gonna be a little bit extremely upset no <laughs> way okay i'm not really that upset about it but still that's crazy um, we'll play the normal Barrow Stalker first. That's, that's just ridiculous, dude. <laughs> Inspiring Kinsman. Man, this guy's buffing everything in his hand up by so much. Um, I guess we'll hit him. Just to gain a little bit of health. the mighty that's fine because of course piercing twilight's going to be our next draw it has to be I will prepare something special for grizzly them. gourmet that sucks i will die for what's right man that sucks this is an upsetting match <laughs> um 
Bromite. We've got eight, so we could do Abner Barrow, uh, or we could do Doppel Galen or Shadow Galen. I think Shadow Fen. What is this normally? Four four, right? Because it's buffed up two two, so three four. Yeah. So we'll Shadow Fen that. Uh, and then I think we'll put some more Barrow Stalkers into our list because we are super low on health. Okay, we get Javelin. There's a lot of removal going around tonight. A lot of people playing some high removal stuff. I'm going to pocket the Mummify. That way we can use it on something a little bit more high priority. Uh, kill this, play Grumite, get rid of another Javelin, and then we play Barrow. And that's a pretty good turn, so long as he doesn't have another Javelin, or an Edict, or a Mummify, or uh, whatever else. Giant's Camp is also totally fine. He is hitting me a lot in the face, I've noticed. Wrong place for a midnight um, I'm not going to hit him we must with Galen. I just realized also, he can't <laughs> he can't see that I said something to him. Of course. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to hit him with Galen because that's an extra turn that we can uh, we can hit him with the Barrow. We've got this kind of nasty uprising coming up, if we can get that to go off. He's got a two cost. It's a runner and forerunner. And he's got the Faded Wraith. Wow, I'm going to use that. Absolutely going to use that. I think. Because equal to Faded Wraith's power. So is that going to draw me six cards? Or is it going to draw me five? This is a good science experiment. Huh. Doomed Adventurer, of course, of course. So we'll do Abner on, on this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it draws this. Um, so the text on this is either wrong or Abner is wrong. We'll do a Harpy on you and a dagger fall mage over here hit him just to get that three extra health gain and he's got black soul gem i think we've got a crazy turn coming up because we've got doppelganger ulfric's uprising so we could get like triple Abner okay. value. Stay behind me. It's a 2-2 two, two now. I'll clear it. <laughs> okay. I know Perfect. Alright. So... Well, I don't want to get rid of Galen just yet, do I? I almost want to do, like, Doppelganger Galen on Encano. <laughs> Is that kind of, like, evil? I feel like that might be a little bit evil. Um, I could do Encano. Encano here. And then I could do uh, Mummify. Uh that there we go so if he doesn't have like a a charge creature or something um we've got one two three oh he's gonna get rid of galen yep that's too bad understandable though but too bad this should help oh and he's gonna silence my barrow oh and kana silences and kana well, that's fine because we could we could do like 
doppelganger you. And then... How much damage can I do? Five. Fifteen. Twenty. Alright. So not quite enough. Oh, well now I... I we'll very close. Um... 3-3 three, three, Colovian Trooper. Wrong place for a Let's hit him with that scroll. drain. Out upon it. Boom. Um, yeah, I think this is okay. Go like that. I'm not going to hit him. Don't want to get a random piercing javelin. Cast into time. How rude. Death before dishonor. Awaiting your command. We must protect our stronghold. No! <laughs> Damn it. There goes my win condition. Alright. Um I'll teach go there. you disrespect a thorn. We want to get rid of his um his javelins. Or his cast into time, I guess. One, two, three. And then we want to play a... Damn. Well, we want to get rid of his black soul gem as well, is what I was going to say. Gets rid of my Abner. That's fine. We must protect our stronghold. Go like that. And then uh, Ald Velathi, I guess. What is that? Stormcloak camp? Fighter's Guild Hall. Pulse with 84. It's been an interesting match. Boom. He doesn't have a creature in hand. Does he? I didn't see a rally. Okay, any cheeky way that I can win here. Got Mummify to get rid of this, but we've only got six damage, so not really. Been more Go like that. Go like that. Um, let's do the six seven barrow stalker. <laughs> Why not, right? Nice Elusive try. schemer. Memory Wraith could be very good. I don't quite want to do a Memory Wraith yet. Not quite yet. Because I could still pull his Feldamites out, or I could still pull his his Piercing Javelins out with my Piercing Twilight. Blood Magic. Might have a Corpse Curse. He's got a Gargoyle. That's fine. I <laughs> got both in Venom. <laughs> Funny. Okay. So let's go. We'll do... Because I've got 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 6 is 15. So, boom. 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 Okay, we win. Silence. Mummify. GG. <laughs> what an interesting match. Oh my god. That, was, that felt like a long one. That was probably the longest one yet. Okay, we're up against Azera Blackheart, the Daedric Master. And they're on Tribunal, of course. I haven't played Tribunal in forever. I think I've got two Tribunal decks on the channel, and they're both thematic. They're not really super serious the the actual like lore themed tribunal one is a little bit more serious it's it's not bad uh but the one that i've got is the falling wizard which <laughs> the falling wizard deck is one of my favorite decks honestly it's a lot of fun to play i have no patience for fools speak citizen uh this guy's already got a lot of tempo on us
but he has used two ring charges already, so... Oh, and an execute. That sets us back kind of far. Now, oh man, what am I more afraid of? Probably the Bruma Profiteer. We'll get rid of those executes. <laughs> we'll see if he if he does an edict or something on us. I think I forgot. No, I did check. They were on 75. Okay, edict. So we can get that out of his hand too. Um, Harpy on you. This should be good for us too. So we'll do that. Twilight and Edict. One, two, three. The next thing that he could have is Javelin. If he's got Javelin, I will shit my pants on stream. <laughs> okay, cool. Doesn't have Javelin. He does have Harpy, though. We're dealing with the exact same board setup that we were before. I don't quite mind using a Memory Wraith here. Because he's got, like, nothing in his discard pile. That I want to get rid of, anyway. Okay, another Harpy is good. We'll shackle that. Never seen someone so aggressive play Telvani before, <laughs> especially with these control cards. Man, what a ridiculously aggressive deck. So we're going to have to look out for... Man. Uh, we're going to have to look out for lightning bolts coming towards our face. Play a Wardcrafter here. The reason I'm doing this, it's kind of an awkward move, but we're going to do Ulfric's Uprising at some point, hopefully soon, and all three of these have summon effects Blue that we can get more value out of. I smell the okay, Barrow. Of the living. Do Fell the Mighty. And I think we'll do a Knight to Remember here. Rather than his grove. Oh! <laughs> what is wrong with you? Why are you blue? Oops. Well, that set us back. <laughs> you guys knew what I was trying to do. Um, yeah, that sucks. Oh, no, I mean, that was totally on purpose. That was, that was absolutely what I was trying to do. Uh... <laughs> we'll play her down um, and pretend like that didn't happen. The Blood Magic Lord could be good. I think I like just Ancano here. Just to be able to blast one of these guys. Hmm? Daggerfall Mage. Alright, so we've got. You're going to pay. Ulfric's Uprising. Um, I think Mummify... Mummify feels not super necessary here. Um, especially because I've got this coming up. So, do this. I'm actually going to pull out a Barrow Stalker. I will give a ward to the correct creature this time, believe it or not. I'll give a ward to my Ward Crafter. And then I will shackle this, kill this, stalker this, hit him in the face, and now he's down to one card per turn. So that's exactly what we wanted him to be at. And I've got fell for that. And I, I personally don't really care about what he's got going on. Okay, and now we need to just take things slow to fell hist grove blood crazed gortwog's pretty good to see and we're kind of going to want to follow a similar plan to what we did last time so we've got our barrow stalker over here we're going to want to just hit with the barrow for a while because that's our only 
Okay, there's the lightning bolt. Uh, we're going to only want to hit with the barrow because that's our life gain guard. And we'll see how long it takes him to realize what we're doing. Uh, we'll do Elusive Schemer and uh, Gortwog. This way, if he does have Dawn's Wrath, he's going to blow up the Shadow Lane rather than the Field Lane because I value my Drained Creature more than I value any of these over here. Although it would seem that he doesn't have Dawn's Wrath. Just looking at Gortwog, trying to figure it out. Sorcerer's Negation, damn. Unfortunate. Okay, we'll just expend everything and hit him there. Um, I will actually hit him now, because we've got a Hollow Death Priest, so we can Death Priest get rid of his other Phalanx Exemplar. And now we know that whatever he's got here is probably not too crazy. I'll lay down another Ald Velothi, and we'll just continue poking away at him with the Barrow Stalker, gaining minor life every time that we do. If he is for some ungodly reason running an Iron Atronach, uh, that would also be another reason for me to shit my pants. <laughs> okay. That's fine. We'll do... I will do this. Uh, and Kano getting buffed up is whatever. And we'll play... Emmerich, Covenant King. I'm going to play him in the field lane this time. We'll just kind of hold our turn. He is at one card a turn still, but he's now got three cards in hand. One of them being Sorcerer's Negation. He is refusing to hit this Barrow Stalker. It's very interesting with these cards. Um, yeah, Night Shadow over here, and then we'll we'll try to kill him on the next turn. Ice Storm. Got 14 damage over here, plus Ancana. We should be able to win, because we've got Mummify. And Shadowfen. I will, I'll actually play the Shadowfen first. So we'll do that, then four, then three, then win. Alright, good game. That was very aggressive from Tribunal. Just kind of haven't really been uh, recording the Legends a whole lot. The Dark Souls streams have been going up, which everybody cares a whole lot about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's just kind of an easier game to, to pop on and play. Uh, requires less brain power, I think. So, we've got the Daggerfall Mage, the Dark Guardian, and the Red Year, along with a Galen the Shelterer, so not too bad. We're up against Sir 7711. They're on a 94-card Tribunal deck, which may be a little bit different from the one that we just faced. And Sir 7711 is the Conqueror, and they are taking a little bit of time on their first move. I also don't mind getting a Grumite Magus here, because I think against Tribunal he's going to have a lot of actions, so not too bad of a card to pull. Breaking a Ring Charge to play an Altmer Dragon Knight. Do we will, do we let him hit me, or do we allow him... Hmm, that's interesting. I think we play Daggerfall. Because if he does have a Sorcerer's Negation, now that we have the Fell the Mighty, he'll buff this up to a 5-4, and we can just hit it with a Fell the Mighty. If he doesn't, then we're getting a Tome of Alteration, and we're killing this. Mage's trick, okay. That was probably the smartest thing he could have done. And I respect it. 
Does Dark Guardian work here now? I would like to get a Dark Guardian down. I think this is fine. I I'll I'll play into this. I'll bite. It puts up like a bigger wall for him. He can't simply kill it with a lightning bolt. He could, I guess, use execute, but oh, he's got a he's gonna use a piercing javelin on that. Wow. Um, I think this is fine. I'll just do a shrieking harpy on that, and then I'll I'll probably tome the harpy, and then we'll reset the stage. So now I have a Daggerfall Mage, Shadow Lane. He doesn't have anything. I've got Piercing Twilight. Yeah, and now he uses the negation. So now I've got Piercing Twilight, and that could be used uh, pretty effectively to get rid of his Piercing Javelins. One, two, three. Perfect. We've, g we've been getting pretty lucky with that. And the next card that we could use that on is his Negation. Okay, or Edict. <laughs> I'd rather do Edict, to be honest with you. Um, buff up our Emmerich, which is pretty good. And I don't feel the need to, to Galen in any of this stuff. Maybe Lanith could have been good. Okay, Forked Bolt's going to draw me a card. It's going to be Barrow. And then he probably... Okay, he goes straight face. What is with people tonight being so aggressive. What did I do? Uh, <laughs> we'll go Galen Barrow. He's coming up on Dawn's Wrath. I guess that's just something we're going to have to deal with. He definitely hits... Wow. Alright, that's getting silenced. It would be really funny to hit that with the red ear for all you lore heads out there. Um, do a Shadow Vent Priest on this. Uh, probably should gain some health and preserve it. So now it's not so clear what lane he should do a Dawn's Wrath on. Should he do Shadow Lane with his Vivac or should he do Field Lane with his Barrow? Not quite as obvious. It's very hard for him now to play actually anything against the Barrow Stalker because it's being supported by that Odd Velothi. An Ice Storm would be detrimental here. I'd only have a 4-1 Shadow Ven Priest left. But then again, also, don't listen to anything I say because I'm the guy that played <laughs> that played a Ward Crafter on my enemy's Barrow Stalker earlier or whatever it was. So, you know, use your best judgment when listening to me. <laughs> Uh, we'll play the Grumite just because... Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Okay, I don't want to hit him. That's... That's kind of scary. And Manticora. Emmerich is a pretty good answer for that. Barrow? But yeah, he doesn't have any actions unless he just drew one. Lightning bolt. Don't you do it. Okay. <laughs> that would have been crazy. Okay, five. This will re-trigger the summon effect of that. Um... Man, do, I don't run Thorana in this deck. That's kind of crazy. What would be the easiest way to win this? This. This. And then pulling Ancano, probably. Is there any other way that I can win? Not that I can see currently, so... We'll grab Ancano. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Man, he does not have anything, then. He's plugging the holes as best he can, but... 
Not really a way to go about that. Uh, so yeah, we'll just hit him with Encano. Good game. Last few matches have been pretty solid. The last two, though, I mean, the, these aggressive Telvani lists, I've been kind of impressed. Or, I don't know if impressed is the right word, but kind of stunned. Okay, we're up against Peron, the Keeper of the Green Pact, and they are on a... 100-card Telvani deck. Wow. I'm going to keep this opening hand. We'll see if we can actually get any value with it. That has yes yet to be determined, but so far it's looking solid. I slay the Ald Velothi Assassin. The problem with the Ald Velothi Assassin turn one shadow lane as opposed to field lane is that it doesn't actually lock anything down. Um, it's hidden for that turn. Yes, but so is my card. So now I can pop out at any point and I can just, like, assassinate him. Well, not anymore. But, like, my point would have stood a little bit better if that card had survived, I guess. But uh, Barrow's Docker can do the same job as uh, the other one. Tribunal is popular tonight for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't really feel like I see a whole lot of Tribunal regularly, but here we are. Um... We're going to mummify... Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to mummify this, yeah. I was thinking about Hist Grove and then Spine of Elder's Blood, but we can just ring out a spine. Perfect. I think I'd prefer to ring out a spine. And I don't really like, like I've said a few times this stream, I don't really like playing solely in the shadow lane. I would have preferred to play that in the field lane, but because my opponent has a five health advantage on me, I don't really feel comfortable even letting a shriveled mummy get this much value against me. And there goes my blood magic lord. That's fine. That's that's what I get for running hollow death priests myself. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. I don't mind the blood crazed. Hollow Death Priest of my own can go out next turn, I think, a little bit easier because we could do Hollow Death Priest piercing Twilight. Feasting Hunger's fine, so we swing like this and then like that. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> That's an annoying card. The red year could be a decent reset. Then we get Devaith out next. Doesn't feel wholly necessary. Like I could just play I think I think the tides of the battle have changed. Okay, we get oh we hit his Parthenax. Hell yeah, that's huge. Um, we'll do a piercing twilight over here then. And get rid of his Aerostorm, maybe. Aerostorm feels right. Isn't that insane though that he had Parthenax in his hand when he had a 100 card deck? <laughs> I just the odds of that are crazy, man. I feel like people always get those those uh, high-cost dragons early on, no matter how many cards they have in their list. Okay. Boom. 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 Now, if he's trying to keep my ward from staying intact, uh, he'd probably kill this and then kill this. But he's going to go straight face. Which makes sense, given what he's trying to do, which is more more aggro tribunal. I 
Which I suppose could work. Like, I'm not against the idea of it, but I've just never seen it. Uh, we, we mummify, right? I could do unstoppable rage, but that feels a little, a little bit like overkill. Let's do that. That. Cycle our cards. Then we get Ancano, which is pretty good. A little bit less good now that he's got this Divine Fervor up, but... Damn. He's running the moose. Maybe that's why he's so intent on dealing damage to me, because he's worried that I have a moose of my own. But rest assured, I do not. There's no moose here. I think we'll get... Ancano Shadow. Do that. Hit him for a little bit. Elusive Schemer. And then we actually have 5, 10, 15, 20, 23 damage we can do on the next turn, provided he doesn't remove anything or guard anything or hit a prophecy. So I'm biting my nails. Okay, Fingers of the Mountain kills my Ancano. <laughs> Shit. Training is over. It's time to act. Okay. That's not too bad. Do, do, do. I really don't like the idea of what he has in his we hand. Will no. win the day or die trying. Kill this. I'm very hesitant to play Devaith because I know that he could just get rid of it in a heartbeat with with Edict or something. So I'm trying to play a few of my lesser valued creatures. For the Emperor. Capital job! Capital! Ooh, the Justin Larson, new follower. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Much appreciated. I'm a very big fan of yours myself, so that's that means a lot that you would give me the follow. Um, okay, so what can we do here? Uh, he stole my ward, but I can... I believe I get that back at the end of every turn, right? Yeah, so... Um, also, Justin, if you're still watching, uh, I saw what happened to you at the... Um, man, what was that? Um, I saw you posted about it on Twitter. It was it was the hail that was happening at that, that venue you were at. I hope you guys are doing okay after that. Um, yeah, so what can we do here? We can do... Dark Rebirth gotcha. to Sometimes get rid of his dirty. Bishop of the Hour. So be it. We will I think that would be a good answer. Trying. And then we've got Devaith Fear that we can lay down and potentially deal six to his dome or to the Penitus Oculatus agent. <laughs> uh, either way, you know, that's fine. Thanks, brother. We're doing great. Appreciate it. Can't stick around, but glad to see you enjoying the game. Have a good night. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Dude, much appreciated. For real. Thank you for stopping by. It means a lot. Hope to see you again in the future. Alright, so... Paran... He's trying his best to stay in the game here, but I don't know if he can actually withstand me. Oh, well, he can withstand me. Hmm. I have many important Ooh, Ancano. The man himself. Oh, wow. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> oh! Okay, hold up. Hold up. We hit with this. Check this out. Abner Tharn and Kano blast him. Oh, dude, I would be so mad right now. I'd be, I'd be pissed. Dark Rebirth <laughs> and and Kano blast him. You can't stop it, man. You can't stop the. Well, you can stop it, but Tribunal can't. 
Tribunal can't stop the uh, the party train. That's crazy, dude. Holy crap. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to end on much higher of a note than Justin Larson coming around and us getting a crazy win. So, I'm going to head on over here, which is what I usually do when I'm finishing a deck. And just once again, thank you guys for showing up. This was a really fun stream. Uh, had a lot of really fun moments with this deck. I really, really enjoy this deck. I have not changed it once since I featured it last year. So if you guys want to give this a try, um, feel free. I'm going to post the deck code in the description, as I always do. And uh, feel free to check out the first video that I did on this as well. I think the thumbnail is probably uh, the funniest thing ever, <laughs> which... I have a very stupid sense of humor, but um, I'll, you know, post it in the comments below or show it on screen or something like that. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's that's the deck, and uh, that's about all that I have to say about it. I'm getting a little bit tired, so it's kind of hard for me to come up with more stuff to say, but I'll stick around for about five minutes, but this is where the YouTube video will end. So once again, thank you for making it this far, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.